Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, yeah, here we are. I did not think I would be making a video like this. I've never made a video like this before. I'm not gonna consider this an exposing video. This video is about the truth. If some of you guys don't know, Gabby Hanna released a video yesterday, basically talking about her experience on Escape the Night, and it is just full of lies, manipulation, and delusion, and I'm here to set the record straight. Let's get into the video. So, if you would like the truth, please watch the entire video. You guys know who I am, I'm Daniel Prada, known as Mr. Prada here on YouTube. I do a lot of home content, do a lot of travel content, I do a lot of vlogging, DIY, lifestyle, etc. But, first and foremost, I am a writer and a producer, it's what I went to school for. I was lucky enough to collaborate with my former partner, Joey Graceffa. I was a senior producer for four seasons of Escape the Night. As a senior producer, it was basically 10 jobs combined into one. Uh, I worked extremely closely with Joey and the entire production company. With YouTube, I worked on everything from casting to fonts to art to billboard art. I made sure things were good on set. I was the liaison for talent and their agents. Since I did know everybody personally, because I did work on casting and a lot of people were my friends, I was able to have that direct one-on-one -on -one collaboration and connection with people. So mostly everybody I was on a name-to-name -name basis. I would just text people if they needed something. Anybody could always come to me for whatever they needed. Like I said, I was involved in every facet of the show production for the most part. One thing that I want to touch upon first is in Gabby's video, she used ADHD as a crutch to excuse her behavior on set. Dude, a lot of people have a lot of stories about me being unprofessional. Her behavior was extremely erratic. It was very rude. It was disgusting. It is not professional. And nearly everybody on set had an issue with her. However, I have a big issue with her using ADHD as an excuse for that. Having ADHD or any mental health issues, first of all, does not allow you to act like that. While everybody is different and I respect that, I personally have ADHD, I have anxiety, I have depression, but I'm an adult and I have for the past 10 years I have taken care of that. I'm very lucky to be able to be on a medication that works for me. I go to therapy, I work out almost seven days a week to some capacity, and I know who I am. And I do not let my issues with mental health reflect who I am as a person. When I come on set, I'm there to work, I'm there to treat other people with respect, and I'm there to have a great attitude and collaborate with people, period. And that is something that I had a major issue with in Gabby's video. Her using that as an excuse is not an excuse. For me. I don't know if it is for you, but for me, I don't think so. Okay, let's take it back to season two, where the issues began. A lot of her behavior on season two was reflected in season four. However, the way that I think, and a lot of other creatives think, shit may happen on set, but at the end of the day, if the big picture is that it's an amazing show, that is what we focus on. However, that does not take away from the behavior that was exuded on set by Gabby. I think one of the biggest issues of season two was the clash between Gabby and a lot of the other female co-stars. There was a lot of jealousy, there was a lot of competition. I don't know why we were all there to have a good time, we were there to film this awesome show and really just put on a good time for you guys. So, you know, we had Tana, we had Andrea Russett, we had Laura DIY, we had Liza Koshy. I'm blanking right now. You get it, I'll pop up the billboard. There were issues with everybody, but they all stemmed from Gabby. Gabby was extremely rude to Tana. Tana was very new to fame, to influence, to having a following at the time, and there was a lot of bullying from Gabby's end to Tana, which I believe Tana has talked about publicly many times. And the same thing with Liza. I really think there was just a weird dynamic of having somebody who's a competitor from Vine and YouTube on the same show that you are. And I really think that Gabby was just not confident in herself and needed to act up and act like a massive diva on set just to outshine everyone else. But like I said, at the end of the day, she was very, very entertaining. And that's what came across on camera. But unfortunately along the way she did screw it up for a lot of people and she did cause a lot of harm. Moving on, fast forwarding to season 4, the initial concept for season 4 was a brand new season but we ended up going with an all-stars theme which the network YouTube liked more. So we went out to Gabby. Gabby in her video says that we begged her to be on the show, that Joey and I were begging her. And Joey and Daniel are like, please, we really want you to be a part of the show, we loved you in season 2. Nobody was begging you girl. At this point. 
your reputation was preceding you, but there was a lull in her dramas online at the time and she was in a pretty good light, so the network approved her. Nobody was begging her to be on the show. To be on Escape the Night is an amazing opportunity. It is on a massive platform. You're on billboards all across the United States. You're paid, obviously. You are hand selected by executives or you're allowed to be by the top executives at YouTube. Your videos are also pushed into another algorithm because you're being seen more on a weekly basis when the show rolls out. Also, the whole VidCon element, you're on this panel with 10 top creators and 10 massive creators in front of a sea of thousands of fans. There's so many opportunities for growth, for connection, for collaboration with other people. And it truly just is an amazing opportunity to be on a show of this stature. You guys know Escape the Night was the longest running show on YouTube Originals, YouTube Premium, whatever you want to call it. So truly, it was an amazing opportunity. And it's a ton of free publicity and marketing. You can't even pay for that. How many people do you see on billboards that are on YouTube? Rarely, unless they buy them themselves. I do have a little notebook of notes, so I'll be glancing down occasionally. But production was during the week of March 11th through March 18th of 2019 here about 35 to 45 minutes outside of Los Angeles. So we either had a hotel for people to be put up by the location or you had a private driver every night, a black car bringing you back to your house and bringing you back to set in the morning. You could choose, you could do a combo of both. We reserved about 20 rooms for cast and talent. So basically you could stay there if you wanted or you could go home. Literally whatever you wanted, we were gonna cater to talent. So here are some clips of the trailer and the first day. Here it is, there's a kitchen living room, little vanity area there in the back. And over here is a bedroom. There's a shower if you want to take a shower. Bedroom here and a toilet. So actually on productions, especially with cast trailers, they aren't this nice. But because I know everybody on this season, like all seasons, I really wanted to make it something special. There's a bunch of candy here in case you have a sweet tooth. There's some fruit and vegetables, some little energy supplements. Uh, seaweed snacks, these are like more healthy snacks here. And then in the fridge, I'll give you the tea on what people asked for. So we have water, Red Bull, energy drinks, kombucha. Uh, Colleen literally only wanted Coke. We have fruit plates, veggie plate. Daystorm wanted protein drinks. As you can see, sweetie, that trailer is stunning. Healthy foods, there's also some junk foods if you have a sweet tooth. There's green juices, there's water, there's fresh fruit, there's fresh vegetables, there were ice pops in the freezer, there were almonds, seaweed snacks, healthy snacks, Cheez-Its, everything. Anything you wanted, we had it there. We even had hummus, vegetable trays, and all of those were being replenished daily by me. Again, not my job description, but it's something that I wanted to do because I was friends and friendly with everybody on the cast that season. I wanted everybody to be well taken care of. And none of that was funded by YouTube or the production. They gave us $500 to outfit that trailer for the entire week. So Joey and I took money out of our own pocket, upwards of $3,000 to outfit that entire trailer and make it look beautiful, have it be comfortable. I also had beautiful barefoot dreams robes made for everybody in the cast. They were personalized. Those were like $200 a pop, just as like a little welcome gift to our friends. And right here we have actually some cast robes that I had custom made with the Escape the Night logo right here. This one is Colleen's. So clearly everybody was well taken care of, so I'm very confused of the disconnect here because I'm hearing a lot of, there was nothing healthy on set, da 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 da. That's not the case. Here are the visual representations of that. Okay, there's literally no healthy food. Also, Colleen was on set that season with her baby Flynn, which is insane. This was her first working job after she had a baby and she was super excited to be there. She's a dear friend of both Joey and I's and she's an extreme professional and we're so happy to have her on set. We're able to actually get another trailer, albeit a little smaller, for her to breastfeed in private and then she would come to our trailer and hang out with everybody. But again, that was another trailer I outfitted with a bunch of beautiful snacks, wanted to make it comfortable. You know, anything she needed, she could come to me and she did not make any extra requests. I think she just wanted like Coke, and Cheez-Its, but of course I put a bunch of healthy snacks in there too. There was also a running bathroom in there if she needed to change Flynn. Again, that is something we wanted to do, so we did truly go above and beyond for every single person and treated everybody with the utmost respect and dignity. Okay, 
First day of filming, first day of filming is my favorite. Everybody has these nerves and jitters and excitement. I was running on no sleep because I was running around doing literally everything. I had a earpiece in my ear. It was just like all around a really exciting day. I wanted to insert a clip of Gabby here in her wardrobe. Here she is. Out of breath. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, anytime we have to run for the challenges, I'm done It's for. over. Done for, but guess what? Oh, Stunning. wait, give a turn. Gorgeous. As you can see, she's living for it. She loved how she looked. She was wearing this beautiful silk slip dress underneath and then over was a thicker velvet duster coat with, I believe, ostrich feathers around. And also, due to legality on set, I wish we could have had all the girls in beautiful, like, high heels, but the most we could do was, like, a kitten heel, so that's a half an inch to an inch. So I'm really not sure of what the complaint was about that, but I can understand if you can't walk in a kitten heel. Albeit a little confusing, because even I can walk in a six inch heel, sweetheart. So as I was saying, the first day was great, but I did have a lot of feedback from other YouTubers already due to Gabby's attitude. You know, there was a lot of complaints first day, but nothing truly directly towards me until day two. However, at the end of day one, a female YouTuber came up to Joey and I. I do want to protect people and you know, I'm not gonna bring in their names because they're not a part of this and I don't want them to get attacked by anybody. Anyways, this female YouTuber who's been a long time friend and a long time collaborator and somebody who's been online for a very long time, was very successful, she came up to Joey and I and asked to be killed off the show as soon as possible because she was extremely uncomfortable with Gabby Hanna and how she was acting on set. So I'm thinking, I'm like, huh, interesting. Her actions are now affecting the cast. If her actions affect me, I understand that. I'm able to move past that because I'm a professional and I want to keep people happy, I want to keep it rolling. But now that it's affecting cast, and I heard some things from crew, from the makeup and wardrobe department, we have an issue here. This is now going to create a very toxic environment because once it starts, it's really hard to make those situations better. I did want to talk about what filming is like on a set. Filming on a set in comparison to filming as a YouTuber, like in this situation where I have complete control of the narrative, there's only one camera in front of me, I can say exactly what I want. If I want to stop, I can. If I want to drink coffee, I can, clearly, anything. But the big difference is here. When you're working on a professional Hollywood set, it's no longer about you. You need to go in with a positive attitude, wanting to create something amazing. And that's what we are doing. Everybody on this set of All Stars has been in the industry for a long time, has worked on music videos, TV shows, pilots, movies, etc. You name it, they've done it. And they're all extreme professionals. However, it's not easy working conditions. We're filming for anywhere from 12 to 15 hour days in the middle of the night. We had night shoots. It was not freezing, but it wasn't warm. But the thing is, everybody had jackets. If you wanted a jacket, if you wanted to alter your wardrobe, we could get you another jacket that, you know, worked with your wardrobe. A lot of people did that. Some people didn't because they wanted their outfits to be seen. And that's fine. I had this absurdly ridiculous call time and I literally told the producer, no. So I'd literally just be sitting there for fucking ever. Like I said, the hours were long and what we say in the industry is something, if you guys have ever worked on a set before, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Hurry up, get to set. Oh wait, we're not ready for you. Go back, sit down. This is how it works. Unless you're Meryl Streep, unless you're an A-list actor, unless you have an Oscar or a Grammy, which I don't believe Gabby has either, there's no, oh, you're gonna come to set, you're only gonna film for an hour and then you're going home. That's all we need. It doesn't work like that. When you're on set, this is a group effort. This is something, it's a collaboration. We had a crew of over a hundred people working on the show, people who are industry professionals who work every single day of their lives and work extremely hard to feed their families and to keep a roof over their heads. They're not making thousands of dollars just by walking onto set and working for a few hours. It doesn't work like that. So what I'm saying is working on a Hollywood set is just extremely different. You don't have the privacy, you don't have the control. It's not about you. It's a group effort. Without the sound guy, we're not gonna have a show. Without an assistant, we're not gonna have happy people. Without a makeup artist, you're not gonna have somebody who looks great on camera. Without wardrobe, you're not gonna have an outfit that fits properly. It is all about working together. 
Okay, I want to talk about wardrobe. In Gabby's video, she continues to lie about her wardrobe, saying nothing fit. She was getting irritated because of her jewelry. I showed up to set, and like one of the things they promised was like, we promise we'll get you a really comfortable outfit. They were bragging that they were like spent all this money on this like beautiful silk. I show up on set, literally the exact same problem where I literally couldn't move my arms and I was feeling really restricted and like claustrophobic in it. All the shit that I was promised wasn't going to happen essentially. Let me give you the facts here. The reason why her outfit didn't fit is because Gabby didn't attend two out of the three wardrobe fittings. Right here, I'm going to show a text. Again, I'm completely leaving the executive's name out of the text because I don't want her to be attacked, but here's the text. I'm going to read it to you as well. Gabby, is. this is March 8th. This is three days before filming. Do you know how difficult those days before filming is? Everybody's stressed, everybody's freaking, it is crunch time. The way wardrobe works, it is done weeks before the show is supposed to start, not days. Maybe in the last few days, there's a few edits, we change a color, we change a little size, we do a little nip, a little tuck, but that's it. Gabby is officially on the shit list. Not only did she make who is nine months pregnant, drive all the way to her studio in Porter Ranch today at 5 p.m., but she legit left early and isn't available all night to get fitted. I respond, OMG. So we will have to pick her outfit for her and it won't be fitted. It is the biggest fuck you. She canceled on us yesterday too. To get this text and to know that somebody is putting their schedule ahead of a massive production is extremely embarrassing to me, especially that I considered Gabby, I'm not gonna say I considered her a friend, I considered our relationship friendly, cordial, I was always kind to her. And it was just really shitty to hear that because everybody else somehow in their busy schedules, including Bretman Rock, who flew from Hawaii and one of the kindest, most professional people I've ever met and who I consider a friend, he's amazing. He was able to make all his wardrobe appointments. Every single person was except for Gabby. I don't know. To me, I don't really need to expand upon that. The facts are here. So the issues surrounding the wardrobe are valid, I will say that, but the reason why they're valid is because Gabby, you never showed up to the costume fittings. You didn't respect the team enough to make those appointments, therefore, yeah, your outfit was a bit ill-fitting. Maybe it was a little tight, but guess what, sweetheart? That's your fault. If the necklace was causing irritation, which you're saying you're only allowed to wear sterling silver, the piece was sterling silver. So I'm very confused as to how you have pus and warts and growths or whatever all along your body. Nobody forced you to wear the necklace. The first time you had an irritation, you could have ripped the necklace off and thrown it into the woods and say, oops, I lost it. Hello? Or just tell wardrobe, this isn't working for me, I'm gonna need to take it off. Nobody forces anybody to wear anything. This is not that type of production. Okay, let's talk about the food restrictions on set. In Gabby's video, she's saying that the food issues on set triggered her eating disorders. My eating disorder was at an all-time peak. Which, you know, I will be sensitive to that. And if that's the case, I completely respect it and I'm sorry that that happened. However, I will not be lied on saying that there were not options for you. I'm giving you these very clear things that I need. I need to meet my dietary restrictions. First things first, weeks before production starts, everybody has sent a shit ton of paperwork. Paperwork talking about your preferences, allergies, what you want to eat on set. None of that was filled out, period. And if you don't fill out the paperwork, how are we supposed to know what you want to eat? So, first day was a bust, she was complaining. However, there were options there. There were always healthy options. As you can see in the trailer footage that I showed you, there are options even there. If you're not liking what's on set, you can always talk to the kitchen, you can Postmates, there were people Postmating iced coffees, because that's not our job to get you iced coffees when you first come to set. The way set works, when you come to set, you go directly into hair and makeup, you'll be doing interviews, you go into wardrobe, etc., etc. It's like going to a job and expecting them to feed you the second you step through the door. That's not how it works. You work for a couple hours on set, and then you have lunch, and then you film for a couple hours, and then you have dinner, and then you can film for another couple hours, and you have breakfast, if we run that late. Okay, so now I'm gonna read a couple texts between Gabby and I. This was from February 28th. I said, also, let me know if you want anything in the ETN trailer. I'm having production assistants do shopping this week for snacks slash drinks. She never got back to me with anything. All she said was, I need hella healthy shit or else I'll eat all the chips, LMAO. So I made sure that there were very healthy snacks in the trailer, even though she didn't give me a list of things that she wanted, like everyone else. Everybody else, you know, 
Colleen said she wanted Coke. Daystorm said he wanted protein shakes. I made sure that everything people wanted was in that trailer. March 12th, this was the second day of filming. At this point, she had just woken up. I believe she was uploading a video. She says, what's the internet like on set, better or worse than the hotel? And I said, well, because we're in the middle kind of of nowhere on a big ranch, I'd say worse. I can get you a portable router from Target though for the trailer. It's okay, the files are almost done. When do we get a meal? This is, I'm assuming, right when she got to set, which nobody eats right when they get to set. Hello, you need to come fed. That's the whole, that's how production works. Let me ask. They said the kitchen doesn't even open till 5, then they'll have to take the orders and prepare them. They're taking orders at 4.30. Here's the set menu and they can make you anything else you'd like. Chips, ground beef, which is a protein, penne and meatballs, sausage, penne and ve veggies, veggie, vegetable curry, beans, strawberry and green salad, fruit. My stomach hurts so bad from eating shit I'm not supposed to. Um, and then I continue, I say chicken, veggies, etc. Then she continues to talk about her agents. Did my agents tell you guys my meal requirements? And I said, I'm not involved on the food side at all. Want me to reach out to I'm honestly like on the verge of tears. I'm so specific about food and I've been eating bad shit and feel fat and my stomach hurts from eating literally anything I can with substance. And anyways, I'm not gonna go into detail. The only email I ever got from her team was that she can't have mangoes, no dairy, and no sugar. There are options there. There were options in Crafty. If you wanted to get something else, you could Postmate it to yourself, but I'm assuming that she just did not want to spend any of her own money. But guess what? This is how production works. We gave you the options, everything was there, the platter was out, and you didn't want to eat anything. Okay, so she continues about the food. I wouldn't be surprised if my agents didn't communicate any of that because they didn't commu any communicate anything with the wardrobe shit either. So again, she's playing the victim. She's putting her blame on her agents who, it's not her agent's job to fill out paperwork and tell me what they want. If she doesn't communicate that with them, they're not gonna communicate with me. So I'm really not understanding the disconnect here. I said, right, okay, we will get it done. Sorry for the miscommunication on whoever's part. And she said, love you, sorry for being evil, low blood sugar me is the worst version of me. And I said, it's okay, I'm hypoglycemic, I understand. I have some fresh veggies and hummus here, can I make you a plate as a snack? Also going to Whole Foods for a run if I can get you anything. I pulled this completely out of my ass, I wasn't going to Whole Foods. I'm like, let me appease Gabby, let me go make her some salads each day, it's not a big deal, even though that was not in my job description, but we didn't have the budget for me to have my own assistant this season. So I'm like, let me just go to Whole Foods. I don't want her to be upset and I wanna bypass any of this type of behavior and making people more uncomfortable. Sure, what do you want in it? Chicken, black beans, bacon, dried cranberries, and a little blue cheese crumbles balsamic on the side, please. Okay, want me to grab a few other meals in case for tonight slash two more salads? Sure, that would be dope. Someone just brought me salmon. So I'm really confused here because clearly these were not shown in her video. I, again, I went above and beyond. I worked my fucking ass off on this set. I'm doing jobs I didn't mind doing, but were not in my job description. And I didn't mind doing it because these people were my friends and I did not want to create a toxic atmosphere due to her behavior. So anything that she's saying, this is false. This is a narrative that she's creating to make me look bad and I refuse to stand by that. Also, here's a pic of the salads that I made at Whole Foods. Disregard the pizza here. I was hungry, so I got a little snack, but you can see I made her salads, I got her grape leaves, I got her a bunch of hummus packs, I got her some chicken and rice on the sides, and that is something that I did daily while she was on set. And guess what, I brought those to set, maybe one was eaten. She was eating everything else on set that was unhealthy, and that's not on me, baby girl, that's on you. So the lies regarding the food being triggered because there weren't options is complete bullshit and I'm not gonna stand for that. There were so many options. Not one other person had an issue with any of the food on set. Was it five star? Absolutely not. This is a production. We have catering, we have crafty services, but guess what? That's not what we're here for. This is not a five star restaurant or resort. This is a production and everybody was happy. If somebody wanted something that wasn't there, they had one of their assistants go get it or a friend or even I would be like, hey, do we have this? Can we get this for them? You can talk to the kitchen. You can talk to a PA. You can talk to an assistant. You can talk to literally anybody. You can use Postmates, Grubhub, whatever. But this wasn't happening because I truly believe that Gabby loved creating these issues to make it seem like she's the biggest talent on set because this is something people do when they're not happy with themselves, when they don't know who they are, and when, frankly, they want drama and they want to create this narrative to be the most popular person on set. Now we're gonna move on to day three. This is the planned kill. So as some of you guys may know, 
After three days of shooting, the entire production, the set, the cast, the crew, the makeup, the wardrobe departments, assistants, productions, people were yelled at. She went off. She even says that she yelled at people on set, calling people fucking assholes, calling people whatever name, storming off. It was really ridiculous. So I blew up at the director. I blew up at probably Daniel and not Joey. I was a bitch and an asshole. One of the producers let it slip that they were like killing me off. So that day it was decided that Gabby and Tana would have a double elimination. Tana because she needed to be at the iHeart Radio Awards the next day and Gabby because of her antics. However, both of them together were not good. Either they were both egging each other on, bringing up shit from the past. I'm not sure, but their relationship was extremely toxic and I don't believe that they are friends now. I'm not really sure. I'm not super close with Tana. You know, we talk occasionally, I see her here and there, but there's no bad blood there whatsoever. Tana was a nuisance on set of season two. She was super late, but by season four, she truly did have a glow up. She was on set, she was ready. She had a great attitude, great work ethic. I can't speak more highly of her other than her relationship with Gabby, which was causing a lot of friction on set. Again, it's just these two strong, very passionate women who go head to head, and I just think their clash was not good for the other people on set. Okay, so I'm gonna read some texts from Gabby. I'm not sure who blank is, but can you please let her know that I haven't been refusing to do interviews and I was there in full glam for five to six hours before shooting to do them and was also waiting at lunch to do them and every time someone was going to pull me, they said, never mind, we're not ready for you because I think it sucks that my camp is being told I basically refuse to work. And I said, I have no idea what's happening. I think they're just behind on your interviews. So either 2.15 today or all day on Monday. Let's talk about the interviews. So the interview portion is like sort of a confessional, which you've seen on other shows. We had to do it in a way that's staggered. So say two girls have a call time at 2 p.m. and another two have a call time at 4 p.m. The two girls will alternate. One will go in hair, one will go in makeup, then one will go in makeup and one will go in hair. Then they'll both go to wardrobe and then they'll shoot interviews almost simultaneously or one after another. You either start shooting their interviews before before it starts or after filming or on a completely separate day. However, there's like a domino effect. So if somebody's falling behind, you're gonna be like, hey girl, sorry, you need to wait a little bit. We'll get you in an hour. And I guess that was a big issue for Gabby because her schedule was extremely important and she needed to be doing so many other things. Again, nobody had this issue. Interviews were not fun, they were long. It's kind of like on RuPaul's Drag Race, those confessionals, those are filmed normally all in one day or after each episode. And it's exhausting, it's tiring, yes, but it's part of the show and it, and it really like blends the worlds together. She said, clearly they are behind. My issue is people telling my team I'm refusing to work. So there were moments where she was told to hurry up and wait for interviews. And there were moments that she didn't want to do the interviews. And you know what? That's part of production. I totally understand that. I'm now going to read a text from one of our executives. So we talked to our talent producer team and every time she was told to be ready and on stand for the interview, she wasn't ready. Either her hair or makeup wasn't done or she wanted to eat. The pecking order moved on to the next YouTuber, so naturally Gabby fell behind in interviews. That's why she is needed. When she was originally asked last night to come in at 2.15 to make up for lost time, she said, oh no, I'm not doing that. I had an email from my agent saying, Gabby, you can't refuse to do interviews. And I was like, I'm not refusing to do interviews. So yes, that right there is a refusal to work. That was the only time slot that we had available for you, Gabby, to do your interviews and you didn't wanna do it. So that is refusal of work and yes, that went back to YouTube and that went back to your lawyer and that went back to your agents. And that's why you got the email from your team saying that you're refusing to work because that right there is proof you were refusing to work, period. I continue to respond. I talked her down, she understands where she responds. Again, awesome, thank you so much, Daniel. I'm so sorry you're in this position. You are always welcome to pull me in. I'm here on set now. That again is the conversation I had with one of the executives on the show. So all in all, the reason why this double kill happened, Tana had to go to an award show and Gabby was a absolute mess on set. You know, you can mouth off to me. You can treat me however you want, I can take it. I can compartmentalize this because I've worked on many sets. I've worked with everybody from Mariah Carey to Britney Spears to Wendy Williams to Katy Perry. I have the experience. I've worked on set. I know what it's like to be an assistant. When I first came to LA, that's what I did. I know what it's like to work 17 hour days for barely any money. 
And you know, because of that experience, I'm able to be the best talent and the best producer combo ever. I respect everybody on set because I know that it is a team effort and nothing happens because of one person. It is truly an ensemble situation going on here. But my big issue here is not only were you disrespectful to me, you were disrespectful to the crew. And the crew are our family. We've been working on the show for four years. We work very closely with each other and they are like family and they work extremely hard. So when I have some of my friends who are A-list makeup artists and A-list wardrobers, that really affects me and it really hurts my heart that somebody is making them feel uncomfortable because they're working their ass off for a rate that is not what they normally make. It is much lower on productions and most of them were doing it as a favor. We had Lipstick Nick who is an incredible artist. She was beating so many of the glamour mugs. She's a dear friend of mine and I'm so lucky to have had her but when she's making it difficult for these people to do their job, that's where I have a really big issue and that right there is in addition is to why she was killed off the show. Okay, so she was killed off the show. Next, I want to talk about the key art shoot. Key art is the art for billboards, for thumbnails, for VidCon art, for banners on social media, for buses, bus stops, all that stuff. We were doing press interviews, we were doing BTS interviews. So basically, it is on set. I believe we shot at like, I think it was like Milk Studios or Coyote Studios somewhere. It's a beautiful, massive set where they shoot a lot of movies fully air conditioned, there's a huge green room, it's much more spacious, people can really do whatever they want. It's normally a 10 to 12 hour shoot day because we're not only shooting singles of each person, we're also shooting the cast together, we're also shooting the reveal, we're also shooting, we're just shooting so many things that it's a really busy day but it's much more low key, there's not a lot of running around, it's very chill, you can get your Starbucks before, you can work. It's very calm and relaxed. So the day before the key art shoot, Gabby had another extreme meltdown to me personally. Again, I really wish I did not have to deal with this, but I did. It is not in my job to deal with it. I was verbally harassed. I was attacked. I was demeaned and she made me cry. At this point, I'm running. It's a few days after the shoot. I've worked the entire month on this. And I'm not, I don't wanna get emotional about this, but I was fucking tired. I was absolutely exhausted. She sent me this voice note, which I will play. She, I cried. I was bawling my eyes out. I called Colleen. Colleen can stand by this. I did not know how to react to this because I've never felt so demeaned and so put down ever in my life, especially by somebody that I considered a coworker, somebody who I was friendly with, somebody who I truly did my best to appease and support and be kind to on set. So you may be asking, why did Gabby have a meltdown the day before? And it's because she must have misscheduled something in her own schedule and she could not see her personal trainer and she had to move a music session in a writer's room or something like that during the time that she would be shooting for the billboard. I am now gonna read some of the texts that she sent me. This was March 21st, 325, the day before shooting the billboard. Your team is being really inflexible with the call time and I have somewhere I need to be in the morning. I didn't realize it was going to be an 8 to 8.30 p.m. wrap or I'd never had agreed that the date change would work. I rescheduled my whole life around the first dates, then rescheduled around the second dates trying my best to be flexible for the third date change and I know to no one's fault but I can't keep moving my own projects. Know what I mean? So what she's referencing here, during the few last days of production, we actually had to shut down the entire set because of the Santa Ana winds. We physically could not film anymore. The cranes that were holding the cameras were literally being blown and swaying side to side. So for the safety of the production and all the crew and the remaining talent, we decided to hold two days. So everything was kind of pushed by two days. I responded, totally, this actually isn't any connection to the show. It's a production company hired by YouTube. We don't work with them. Let me see what I can do. What do you need timing wise? I said I could be back in my place in WeHo by one, which is already taking two hours off what I already was doing. They wanted 10.15, I said I can't do that and they won't move it at all. So she's giving me a window from eight to one, I believe, I'm, I'm a little confused, to get her in makeup, to get her in wardrobe, to shoot a billboard with 10 other people, to shoot interviews, it's just not realistic. So I responded, lol, I just called and spoke to the producer 
of the shoot and they're trying to work it out. I think I was trying to say you have a hard call time, which means like you have to be there a certain time to be on camera. So it's difficult as you need an hour and a half for hair and makeup and 30 minutes for a wardrobe. To which we responded, I get dressed in five minutes, the fuck. I'm going to leave this for Andrew, which is her agent at CAA, because I have no pull at all here, babe. And then she responds, well, then I'll show up when I can show up because Andrew is useless and they treat me like trash. So IDK man, I have a commitment. Her commitment was going to the gym. They can wrap me earlier and I can get to where I need to be within business hours, but I can't do a full 10 to 11 hours tomorrow. JK, that doesn't work. My trainer isn't around except my normal time. Dude, don't think I can make it. Sorry, they're being super inflexible and there's only so much I can do. So at this point, Gabby's saying that she's not gonna come to the billboard shoot. And I'm fucking furious. I'm, there are tears in my eyes because I'm absolutely over emotional. I'm exhausted. I haven't slept in days and this is just not gonna fly for me. So this is me snapping. Gabby, you know how this shoot works. You've been on the show before. It's a massive production for the billboards, trailer, artwork, marketing, etc. You are a huge part of the show and it's unfortunate this is even an issue. Again, I have zero qualms from anyone else, even someone who has to breastfeed a newborn. I understand you are busy, but at this point I feel extremely disrespected and sense this is sabotage. You are contractually obligated to be at the shoot. Friendship set aside, I have gone above and beyond to do my best to make things easier for you during production, but I'm at my line. If you'd like to be part of this beautiful marketing with our fellow amazing cast, we look forward to seeing you on set. If not, that's your decision and I'll let YouTube handle this situation moving forward. To which she responds, honestly, Daniel, I asked to come in an hour or two later so I don't ruin the project I'm in the middle of. If you think that sabotage after you and Joey literally killed me off for wanting healthy meals and standing up for myself when no one was making it happen, I'm just confused, lol. I think there's a lot lost in translation, I respond. Everyone wants you at the shoot. I would love to be able to accommodate pushing a few hours for you, but this isn't possible. It's a domino effect. If we push you, we push every other talent, photographer, editor, etc costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's an annoying part of these massive shows and I'm sorry it's not really adjustable this late in the game. This is now 7.30 p.m. the night before the shoot. I'm stressing, I'm talking to executives, I'm talking to YouTube, I'm talking to people's lawyers, people's agents. None of this is in my job description and I'm doing it because I want to fix this issue and I have direct communication with Gabby. Okay, so Gabby then sent me a voice memo, which I will play right now. It's basically reiterating everything, but I just wanna show you guys. It's also three minutes long. I've never sent a voice note longer than a minute, so the fact that this was even sent is completely deranged, but it's basically reiterating everything that she had said before or what she believes to be true. And now you guys have the facts here and you actually know what the tea is. It's like Daniel, I'm reading this and like, actually chuckling to myself because it's honestly unreal i have i have gone above and beyond and i have sat there for hours in complete full glam when i knew i was not needed that early and did not get my interviews done and then had people lie to my agent and say i was refusing to work that is ridiculous now you guys rescheduled the shoot multiple times and I have rescheduled my schedule multiple times. I have a conflict. I didn't realize that this was going to be an eight to nine hour day. Colleen is saying the same thing. She's freaking out because nobody can understand why this is this long of a day. The I'm gonna pause this right here for a sec. She doesn't know that Colleen is one of my best friends and I was on the phone with her Colleen knows exactly how this shoot works. She's had multiple shows of her own. She's toured the world. She's had a Netflix show. She knows exactly what key art shoots entail. And this was not a non-issue for her. She even brought her assistant Corey with her. He was handling things. Her whole family was there. She had her own little green room where she could breastfeed. So I'm not sure where she's thinking that lying using an amazing person like Colleen is gonna get her. I'm very confused here, but I digress. Let's continue. ...is extremely inefficient. I know that I'm gonna go sit there for hours and hours and hours and hours when realistically it should take a couple of hours. I have something that I have scheduled, a project that I've already rescheduled multiple times now. I have to work around other people's schedules for that too. If you guys can't be flexible by two hours after the bullshit that you guys put me through, I would love to send you pictures of my back and the hives on my neck, my ears and my chest and the extreme bloody pussy breakouts I had when nobody listened to me about being allergic to jewelry. I'd like to send you the photos of the bruises and cuts 
from my bleeding wrist, from the rope that you guys tied around my wrist, and I sat there for literally 35 to 40 minutes. I'm gonna pause it again. So during one of the scenes, Gabby was tied to a chair in the dining room of season four, and there was somebody across the table from her that was also tied to a chair, and that was me. Every season I have a little Easter egg character. I was in full prosthesis. I was a caveman, a pretty gorgeous one if I do say sorry myself, and I was tied with that same rope. I was tied by the same person in the exact same way. This is stunt rope. It is not real rope. There were no cuts on me. Unfortunately, I did not show my wrist. I didn't take pictures, but you know what, maybe her skin is extremely sensitive and maybe she was scratched up a bit, but there were no cuts, there was no pus, there was no bleeding of the wrists, and it was not 40 minutes long. We filmed maybe three takes and we filmed in about 20 minutes. So again, I'm just not seeing the connection here. When the cameramen weren't even in the room to film, I had to be sitting there tied up with not even prop rope, real actual rope that bruised and cut my fucking wrist. For no reason. Like, it's bullshit, Daniel. I have gone above and beyond for you guys. So for you to send me that message when I'm saying, hey, I need to come an hour or two later because I've already rescheduled this three times and I have to be there and I'm depending on other people, that to me is absolutely disrespectful. I feel so disrespected when the only things I've ever asked for was a costume to fit, which again... A costume to fit? And it didn't fit because you did not come to the wardrobe fittings, Gabby. And guess who else backs me up to verify that information? Rosanna Pansino. I'll pop it up here, she tweeted on Twitter. She did not attend two out of the three of her fittings, and then she made a grown woman who is nine months pregnant come to her music studio in Porter Ranch, which is a ways out of Los Angeles, and fit her, and then she still left early. So there's your reasoning there. This year it did not and to be warm when everybody else is running around and you had the option to be warm you were given the option for a large overcoat but you did not want to wear that because you wanted the beautiful garment to be seen fur and coat and i'm in a sheer silk garb that was being specifically made for me so that i could have warmth to wear jewelry that i'm not allergic to that i don't have the jewelry situation i'm not talking about this again if you didn't want to wear the necklace you didn't have to and pussy things going up and down my back. Also, there's a cream for that. Back in my neck and my ears, and to have healthy meals. You guys, I've given all the receipts about the meals. It's come, this is a fabrication, so I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you guys are seeing, I, I, let me know if you guys are seeing something that's not there, because I went above and beyond several times. I went out, before cameras were up at 7 p.m., I went out at 7.30 to make her salads myself. And guess what, they weren't even eaten. And it'd be nice if you guys didn't lie to my agent and say that I was refusing to work when I'm literally sitting there. Daniel, you were sitting there when they came in a hundred times and said, Gabby, get ready for your interview. Like I said, hurry up and wait. She was refusing to work, as shown in the text previously. And then I got ready for my interview, and nobody came and got me for my interview. And that's going to be relayed as I refuse to do my interviews and have my agent telling me that I'm refusing to work. So I'm sorry if everybody, like... First of all, had way less to complain about, and I'm sorry if- You're right. Everybody did have way less to complain about. Frankly, there were no other complaints because everybody's a professional and likes to fill out paperwork and notifies us of anything they may need on set, or they take it into their own hands or have an assistant or a manager handle it, unlike you. They all make their managers and agents do it or just talk shit about you and Joey behind your back instead of saying it to you. Again, her trying to push people against me or say that other people are talking shit. I'm a very direct and blunt person, so I will always come to you and you can always come to me and everybody knows that about me. And demanding the respect that they want instead of bitching about it behind your back, which maybe that's like, maybe that's Hollywood, maybe you're supposed to bitch behind people's backs in Hollywood. But if I'm sitting there and I'm uncomfortable and like I have very minimal, simple requests like, hey, can I please not be standing out in 30 degree weather and just silk this year? Can I please move my arms this year? Can I please like wear jewelry that I'm not allergic to this year? And all of those things are ignored. I'm sorry. That's, that is unbelievable to me that you just spoke to me like that. So there's that. I mean, you know, I think that I don't really need to say anything anymore. I've put out all the truth. The texts are there. I have no reason to lie. I'm not pushing an agenda. I'm not pushing a series. I'm not here on a PR crisis tour to 
justify my behavior or to tell people I'm mistreated. It just sucks. So I hope you guys can realize like how that affected me. It's not making me cry right now, but in that moment I was extremely tired and I've just never been disrespected like that before. And there were so many other cases where I was with Gabby and it really just fucked with me. And it made me feel like, oh shit, you're actually not good at your job. And it made me second guess myself. When I know that I'm an incredible producer and I know that I'm talented and I know that I work my ass off and I know that I go above and beyond. Okay, so at this point after that, I reached out to another executive. I explained the situation. Gabby said she was not gonna be able to show up to the set. However, she is contractually obligated to be on the set. So after this situation, I contacted another executive and I explained the situation to which she responded, do you think I should call her attorney to get him to get her to go. It's in her contract she would be at the key art. And I respond, absolutely, let's try everything. What are your thoughts? Then she responded, also, I'm talking to Steven now. He's head of marketing at YouTube. He is wondering if we hire a body double, shoot the double, and put her head on if she doesn't show. And I respond, yes. Then the executive responds, her attorney is just getting into this now, just hung up. I said we can offer her a body double, we can digitally alter her image on, she can have approval, etc. if she absolutely cannot make it. He knows this is in her contract and she agreed to it. Steve, her attorney, just talked to her. She said she will be there. She is going to call her agent to let him know she will as well. In case she does not show up, I have cold open booking a body double just in case. Planning for the worst here, all will be okay. So at this point, she's been threatened by her lawyer. She's been talked to by her agent. Everything's contractual, so she will be showing up, hopefully. So later that night, I get a text from Gabby. I'm assuming after everything happened. I'm telling you right now that if I snap, no one can say anything to me. I have to eat healthy meals at 1, 1.30 p.m. and another at 7.30, p.m. No matter what we're shooting. I'm on a very strict diet and exercise regimen and I have to eat in those hours and it has to be a full healthy meal with enough calories because those are the only times I eat all day. I've already relayed that, but I also relayed it before we started shooting and no one cared. So maybe you and Joey make sure it's heard so I'm not killed off in the marketing shoot. Lol. Was supposed to sound funny, but brought prob bitchy in writing, so read it as a joke. To which I respond, sounds like a plan. Please let me know via a list what you would like to eat for those meals, and I'll make sure it's there. Production deems healthy as chicken and veggies, so I want to make sure you have exactly what you need. Let me know when you can. Okay, hi back. Chicken, fish, veggies, sweet potato, black beans, salad, but like their dry lettuce and two one by one strips of meat ain't enough because I'm only eating twice a day. I need a full ass meal. I'm coming straight from my trainer, so I'ma be hangry as hell. I'm doing intermittent fasting, so I better be a Barbie by April 12th. As long as there's a healthy fat, a healthy carb, and a protein, it should be fine and enough calories. Gotcha, I'll have that available for you and you can dress it as you like. Sound good? This is completely delusional behavior. I've worked with everybody and I've never met anybody who acts like this. If you want something so specific, Gabby, you bring it yourself to set. This is not my job to feed you like this. If you're being difficult and you have like this regimen, I don't know, or I didn't know if, if you're a female bodybuilder or what the situation is, take it into your own hands. Like an adult, like the 30 something old woman that you are. So all in all, I spent that night making her meals again. Unfortunately, I don't have proof of that and I don't have pictures because I never thought I would have to make this video and I never thought I would need to. But as you guys can see, before I did it and I did it again because I didn't want to have issues. So on the day of the key art shoot, she did show up. Not only did she show up herself, but she brought her disgusting behavior on set. I felt I was like walking on eggshells the entire day. I was complimenting her, wanted to make her feel confident, telling her she looked beautiful, which she did. But the thing is, again, she was making people uncomfortable. This point, we had a massive room. Everybody was spread out a little bit, but makeup was still in its little section. All the girls were getting their makeup done. There were people being pulled for shoots, people being pulled for interviews. We were doing some of the billboard moments, shooting everybody solos and then shooting people together. It's easier to shoot people solos than basically put them in together in editing afterwards. However, one of the main issues that early afternoon was in the makeup room, when all the girls were getting their makeup, wardrobe was popping in and out, a production assistant who was this lovely girl, I don't remember her name unfortunately, came in and told Gabby that they're gonna need her on set in five minutes. She comes back five minutes later, she's like, hey Gabby, sorry, we're gonna have to push you another 20 minutes, we're still running a little behind. The girl turns her back and Gabby scoffs in a very loud way, you dumb fucking cunt. I have multiple women. 
I have multiple people who hurt her. Not only myself, because I was in the room, I have seasoned makeup artists, I have wardrobe artists, Rosanna Pansino was in the room. I'm sure that there were other talents in the room that heard this as well. There is never an appropriate time to use that sort of language to anyone, let alone somebody who's on the crew, somebody who's on the cast to another woman, it is never appropriate. It is disgusting behavior, it is unprofessional, and it truly shows who you are as a person. And I don't think Gabby even really remembers that, but a lot of other people do, including Rosanna Pansino, myself, multiple makeup artists who are friends of mine, and other crew members and cast members who were in the room at the time. I don't need to name names. It happened, it's a fact, and do with that what you will. At this point, the behavior was exactly the same as it was during the filming week. Gabby was done about 70 to 80% of her work, and I made the executive decision as well as other people on the production to cut her. I said, you know what? We got what we needed for the most part. Let's send her home. So I played it. I played it cool. I said, hey, Gabby, we're done with you. You can actually go home, to which she left. We were not actually finished, but I did not want to continue this treatment to anyone on set. It was just creating a absolute toxic environment, which is not, it's not cool, and it's not supposed to be the case. Rap days and shoot days like that are supposed to be fun. Everybody's supposed to have a good time. We're all chilling. It's, it's supposed to be like kind of like a party. So what I had to do, if you guys remember, if you guys are fans of the show and have watched the show, we did a cast reveal video. This was a scene where everybody was shot in their glass cases. The video, it was kind of like a promo video. I'll pop it in here. And as you can see, Gabby's character is set way in the back and her hand and the dress is covering her face. And the reasoning behind that is, that wasn't actually Gabby. That was Megs Cahill, who is an incredible makeup artist on set. I believe she did Tana and Gabby a few times. I asked her personally to get into Gabby's wardrobe because they were the same height and sizing-ish and to stand in that box and she did, thankfully. So that's why we sent Gabby home because I knew that she would have an issue with that. We had to stand in the box for like an hour while stills were taken and Joey walked around and flashed the torch and everything, it was beautiful, but that's the reason why she's set way in the back and her face is being covered. Let's talk about the next six months, six to eight months after the shoot. The show debuted at VidCon July 11th to a fantastic reception. We did press and promo there, it was amazing. Escape the Night is such a moment at VidCon. We're debuting the first episode, there's so many fans, we have merch, we have everybody on stage from cast doing interviews. I actually hosted the onstage interview with everybody. It was such a fantastic time and to see all of you guys out there in the crowd was just epic. And that right there is that feeling that I love. So I truly was forgetting about all the other bullshit. I set it aside and enjoyed that moment and it was so great. The show did so well. It was such a fun project and you guys clearly loved it. I mean, it's done just so well on the platform. So the show debuted July 11th and ran until I believe the beginning of September. And then we also had the Escape the Night escape room for the month of August here in Beverly Hills, which was a total blast. So during those months, I really had to watch my behavior. I couldn't speak out on things. I had to walk on eggshells. I was kind. I was warm, I was a friend, and I truly did not feel comfortable speaking up because I did not want my words reflecting on the network or reflecting on Joey or anybody from Escape the Night. So I really just held my tongue about everything and I was scared to speak up. You know that Gabby is a very volatile person online. Her reputation does precede her and I just did not want a part of that. So I played it cool and I was courteous and I was me. I was professional. I'm gonna briefly now touch on the home makeover series that I did with Gabby. You literally were just in my home decorating it for content. So she enlisted me around, I think sometime in the summer, she had just gotten a new house. I pushed it aside for a little bit because I was out of town. And then in September or October, I went in and I designed a space in her living room. Now this was supposed to be a massive series with other large creators doing 
a room in Gabby's house. I'm not gonna name names because I just don't wanna get other people involved, but a dear friend of mine who is a massive DIY and lifestyle channel on YouTube was supposed to do another room and she just felt extremely uncomfortable with Gabby's behavior. She did not have any creative control, so she pulled out completely. I was gonna do the same, but I also didn't want to have any backlash from her if I had pulled out. So let's talk about the collab. I never did a video on my channel. The video on her channel was just completely erratic and a mess. You guys know I do home content here on YouTube. It's very put together. It's vlogging and professional style footage and educational and DIY adjacent. It was nothing like that. It is nothing of the sort. I wasn't really even in the thumbnail. My face was not showcased. I didn't gain anything from it. I wasn't paid for it. It was not even a collaboration. It was basically a brand deal for Gabby to outfit her home in a lot of things from certain brands. So there wasn't any creative control for me. I was essentially a handyman. I did create a mood board with things that I liked from the brands and the way that I wanted the room to be built, but at the end of the day, she picked what she wanted and I was just there to install it. And again, like I didn't get anything out of it and I wanted to do it because I loved home stuff and I was getting more into the home space at that time. And then briefly, I'm gonna talk about the Christmas party. I reached out to Daniel because he tweeted something about Santa's naughty list not coming to the Christmas party this year or something. So every year, Joey and I have a massive Christmas party. It's, you know, it's just a fun time to get everybody together, people that we've worked with, people that we wanna be friends with, fellow YouTubers, actors, models, musicians, whatever. It's an eclectic group of people. We have this huge Christmas party. We had uh, snow blown into the front of our driveway so you could go sledding. There was a bar, there's food, there's catering. There's a big like white elephant party. Every year we're known for our Christmas party. And of course, everybody wants to come because it's such a gorgeous time. However, during that time, December-ish, Gabby was going through a massive drama. I'm not really sure which one it was, there's too many to account for, but I never actually invited her, but she is referencing a tweet. I was just being funny saying, it looks like the naughty, I don't really, I'm not gonna go digging for the tweet, but it was something funny like, oh, Santa's gonna see who's naughty and nice. I'm checking my uh, guest list and checking it twice or something like that. Basically saying that I'm uninviting people, some people from the party. She texted me asking if it was her at the time. I was like, uh, no, I don't think so. And then the next week something else happened. So I didn't even send her an invite. I also didn't invite Trisha because she was going through a drama at the time, like she always is. I've known Trisha for a very long time. We have a friendly relationship. However, she's also in a lot of dramas and has said a lot of shit about my friends and I just didn't want that energy there. And she completely understands and respects that. She knows how this works. I didn't want other people feeling uncomfortable, so there's really no game here. I just didn't invite Gabby and I didn't invite Trisha. And if there's hard feelings, I'm sorry, but they put themselves into that own predicament. So it's not that big of a deal. I just didn't want to make our guests uncomfortable in any type of way. And I wanted to have a great night and I wanted to have fun. And we did, we did just that. And really that's it. This has been, I can't even say it's been freeing because I really have let go of this situation, but it's really nice to be able to put my truth out there. Not even my truth, it's the truth. This is the truth. You know, there are multiple sides to every story, but here are the concrete facts. You have them. I'm known for being outspoken. I'm always gonna be honest and I'm never afraid to say the unpopular opinion. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. But you know what? For a long time, I was afraid because I was scared of being canceled or being attacked or, I don't know, it's just, you guys understand. 2020 and 2021 have, have been such eye-opening times for me. I'm not afraid of that anymore because I truly believe that you guys respect my view and respect my voice of being outspoken and being honest. Take with this video what you may. I'm not gonna ever address this again. I'm over it. I have never been a shit talker. I never start shit, but I will finish shit. And you know what? I am quick to check a bitch when she's out of line. And Gabby, you are extremely out of line. So I know that this video was structured in a way that really hits every single point that Gabby does in her video. And I always truly believe that my words are much stronger than how they can come off on camera. I hope I did a good job at vocalizing everything and explaining every situation and having this be really educational. I'm not trying to drag anyone, I'm not trying to cancel anyone, but I am also not gonna be lied on. And I'm also not gonna have my name be dragged through the mud and a production company that I work with and my ex and the show. We've worked so hard to create this. We've worked with so many incredible creators and I don't have any negative stories about anyone else. Yeah, there's been a few like iffy moments here and there. We've worked it out. 
but nothing that requires this much attention. I did write a little something that I'm gonna share with you guys. It's just a little note to Gabby, and I think that'll really wrap up this video. Dear Gabby, it's unfortunate that you continue to manipulate and use scare tactics in this series as a last ditch effort to salvage what is left of your online influence. Continuing to play the victim card while never truly fully taking accountability of your unprofessional and disgusting behavior on set to cast, crew, and lastly myself while withholding the truth is beyond embarrassing. As outspoken and blunt as I always have been, I walked on eggshells for the past year post-filming. I did not want to upset you in any way and believed you would attempt to sabotage a show or not fulfill your contractual obligations to get revenge if I had been upfront and honest with you at the time. I was scared to speak out due to fear of being attacked and canceled or my words reflecting poorly on my partner or network affiliates. This seems to be a common theme online, bullying others into submission. I have moved on from this, I have grown, and I'm grateful to constantly be working in the industry that I love so much. I have personally apologized on your behalf to the cast and crew and dozens of makeup artists, wardrobe stylists, producers, director, and executives that you have hurt so deeply, and I hope that one day you are able to do the same. I have accepted your half-baked apology, which to me means nothing. However, your actions will never be forgiven. This is a tough industry, and while I believe you may have some talent, your reputation precedes you, and any chance of a successful future career is shrouded by the narcissistic behavior and burnt bridges of the past. I hope you are able to seek the help you truly need to heal your heart and soul and find happiness in your life. And that's that. I'm not gonna say I hope you guys enjoyed this, but I hope you guys see the truth. Everything's there for you to take as you may. I have nothing left to say anymore. I think that really sums it all up and I won't be talking about this ever again. However, if I am asked, I'll always give my honest opinion, but yeah. She's got a point. She's an icon. She's a legend and she is the moment. Now come on now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.